Building a van to live in is not the same as putting together a piece of IKEA furniture. There are no instructions, no right angles, and despite what many people will try to tell you, there is absolutely no right or wrong way to go about it. In fact, a year after completing my first build out, the only thing I can say for certain is that you will make mistakes and your van will inevitably become a never ending work in progress. I'm no exception to this rule and in the last video, I shared some of the mistakes I made during my first van build. I also mentioned that I plan to address some of these issues and was driving my van across the country to begin work on a massive van renovation with my buddy Johnny. In this renovation, we plan to completely transform this empty wall and countertop into a more functional kitchen space, as well as give it an all-around spruce up to make the place feel a little bit more like home. This is an ambitious project and we're pretty pressed for time as, finish or not, I have to begin my drive back across the country in two weeks, so we better get straight to work. Alright, so maybe we didn't get straight to work, but hey, in addition to being fellow creators here on YouTube, Johnny, Seth, and I are actually really good friends too, and we haven't seen each other since I took off in the van last year. Turns out that while I was away, Johnny and Seth both picked up a new favorite hobby that they were pretty keen to share with me too. Now, I never skated as a kid, but these electric skateboards turn out to be incredibly fun, and taking them out to bomb some hills proved to be our favorite work break throughout this renovation. All right, it's day three. We're gonna say three. <laughs> day one was a mulligan. Day one was a mulligan. It's day three. Breweries count as a day. Okay, for real this time. Let's get this party started. As mentioned previously, not having running water in the van has been one of my biggest drawbacks for me over the past year. I knew right away that if I was going to put a sink in the van, it was going to be a big one. None of that so shallow it's only good enough to wash hands and crap here. No, no. This stainless steel beauty is 15 by 20 inches and a whopping 10 inches deep. Now I know what you're thinking, where the heck is this thing going to fit? To make room for my sink and water setup, we emptied out the entire workbench and then proceeded to completely gut half of it. This workbench really has been the unsung hero of my van, and honestly, it's funny because we first decided to add it kinda on a whim. The workbench was the very first thing we installed in the van, the foundation from which all else has been based, and it's wild to see the transformation that it's undergone in this build. <laughs> Dude, that's pretty awesome. Look how much room I have so, right here. It's truly perfect for this. How, how is this stupid workbench thing worked out so well? Look how freaking rad that sink is. I got running water in here, guys. That's <laughs> so sick. What'd you say earlier? It's nicer than my kitchen sink. <laughs> and he just moved into a new yeah, house. Yeah, it's ridiculously nice. This wasn't the end of the build, though. This was just the first piece of the renovation. We continued on to add overhead cabinets that would house the now displaced items from my workbench as well as become my new kitchen cabinet. We then tied the entire area together by adding a much needed pop of color with this awesome faux subway tile backsplash. Obviously, this is all just a very quick summary of a pretty complicated build, during which we absolutely faced setbacks. Between some inclement weather, delayed parts, or things just not working how we thought, these builds just generally tend to take longer than planned. I always forget how much work this stuff is. We, you know, we thought we were like optimistic that we could get this all done in two days at start at the start. I don't know when we'll learn, but luckily for us, Johnny is a woodworking wizard. I've worked with him on a number of projects at this point, yet I am still continually impressed not only by the level of craftsmanship he employs in his work, but also his ability to problem solve when faced with unforeseen challenges. Despite setbacks, we were still able to get everything done in time, and needless to say, I am beyond stoked on this final product. When I first sent the rough design sketch to Johnny a few months ago, I never could have imagined it all coming together this beautifully. Not only do I now have running water in a sink, but I also have more organized storage space than I even know what to do with. The real unexpected win is the added feel that this new backsplash provides to the space. If you're interested in seeing exactly how we did all this, I highly recommend watching the complete build video over on Johnny's channel, The Crafted Workshop. I'll make sure to put a link to that right here as well as down in the description for you all. After moving all my things back into the van and a quick celebratory beer with Johnny, I couldn't wait to go show my buddy Seth what all we've been working on as he hasn't seen any of it. <laughs> he hasn't seen the sink, the any, the cabinet, the backslash. I haven't even seen real pictures of it. And, and I'm still getting over the fact that we're about to have some dinner and you're just in your house. 
Yo, right yeah, here. I'm just chilling. I was just talking to my mom. All right, you ready? To yeah, have yeah, let's see it. Doors blown off. Yeah, I'm ready. There's no lights at all in my van at the moment, though. Okay. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I had no idea all this was going on. Oh my goodness. Yo, look at this cutting. Board. It looks so good with the plywood and yo, you're straight up Pinterest. Looking, yeah, this I'll, is beautiful. You haven't even seen this. Oh, and the little stops. I mean, this is like. Yeah. So, oh my goodness. So Johnny goodness. actually just carved this out. We bought this at Target and then he had to carve this. He just rounded it. it. So that it would just fit flush over that and I can, and I Dude, still have And it a, smells like fresh wood in here again. Yeah. But so this wow. is the gray water tank. It looks like the underside of a sink. Yes. If I was with you guys, I would have had, water. I would have had us install a garbage disposer. <laughs> Cause it just would have been a better thumbnail. I was thinking a thumbnail where I'm like, I got a sink and I'm like, <laughs> you know, I'm like well, because you know, <laughs> that's the that's the obvious. That's the thing. whole reason you get a sink. I mean, it's like in a pinch. That's what people are gonna. Or people are gonna be asking me. It's like, great, now you can pee in that. But hey, visiting so with Seth know. wasn't all fun and games, however, as with only one day to go, I still wasn't quite done getting my van road trip ready. Beyond the renovation, I've had a few electrical issues come up over the past year that I needed help fixing before hitting the road again. We started in the previous video when I showed you all that we replaced my solenoid to prevent the battery issues I was having. Next up were my lights, half of which stopped working about six months ago and left me not only with a pretty dimly lit van, but also some pretty odd colors to work with. We also got drums chilling in here. What's up, buddy? He's not feeling too hot today. So we're not leaving him alone and giving him plenty of belly rubs. Finally, we needed to get my battery charging station back up and working so that I could always have my cameras ready to rock when needed. Is this a uh, buy the book? No. This is a normal thing to do? There's gonna be people who really don't like this. <laughs> hey man, I leave tomorrow and I need this working real bad. Yeah, I just feel like I'm not as dialed as we were when we were first working on the van. We had all those supplies. <laughs> <laughs> and time, we had nothing but time. Although it may not be pretty, we got the job done, which is pretty amazing considering we only had a few hours. My life just got so much better in the van. We wrapped things up at the buzzer on my last night in town, and the next morning with my van all fixed up, it was time to turn west and head back across the country. It sure was a hectic visit, and I'm always a little hesitant to say goodbye to all my amazing friends in Asheville, but at least I wouldn't be alone on this journey west. See, about a month ago I sent an email, and it ended like this. Will we probably be at each other's throats at some point? Of course. Will we have to move slow and stop a lot? Not a problem. Will we look back at it in five years and say, man, I'm glad we did that. 100%. Just say yes and we'll figure everything else out. That was to my dad, by the way. After a little more convincing and a few negotiations about sleeping arrangements, he flew out, hopped in and we hit the road. We made our way northwest, ticking off a couple states I've actually never been to before. We drove through Wisconsin, then on to Minnesota. We visited the famous Gold Rush town of Deadwood, home of the largest biker rally in Sturgis, and made a detour south so that my dad could see Yellowstone National Park for the first time. Just south of Yellowstone lies one of my favorite mountain ranges in the country, and it just so happens that tomorrow was Father's Day, so I had the idea of taking my dad out camping for the night to share the magic of this place with him. Up until this point on the trip, we've been moving pretty fast as we were on a tight schedule, so we had yet to take the time to actually go camp out. But I'm certain I speak for both of us when I say we are so happy that this particular night we decided to slow down, get off the beaten path, and find this absolutely stunning spot underneath the Grand Tetons to park for the night. Does it get any better than this? I'm here camping out with my dad. We, uh, we got a bunch of food. I'm going to cook use the new kitchen and uh, we got some firewood gonna make a fire and just we already got some beers cracked it's gonna be a nice relaxing evening I mean this view is just look at this guys what a refreshing change of pace it was getting off the road and out into the wilderness I immediately felt at home as we settled in and was really excited to get to share a little bit of how I live with my dad After a pretty amazing sunset, I was keen to test out my new kitchen setup and cook dinner for us both. I'm about to cook my first meal ever with this new setup, and uh, I've got a special guest in here to do it with. I'm cooking for my dad, aka the cameraman right now. 
So far, <laughs> so far we've got beers. We've got uh, a little bit of the whiskey. Very little. Set. <laughs> He's not happy we didn't bring more whiskey. Gonna set up some uh, music and we're gonna get this party started. So tonight we're gonna make some uh, stir fry veggies and sausage. So one time I did a live stream in here. For those of you guys that have seen it, you'll know I had to go outside to wash my mushrooms. No more mushrooms getting washed right in the van. It's amazing. You gotta chop the vegetables. And then you gotta cook them. Alright, so we got stuff fired up. Yeah, so air is getting, being pulled through that vent, all the way through the van, and out the fan. So don't worry, guys, we're safe, I promise. And if not, you'll never know. Got my spice rack, spice drawer. Shaking up in there. All right, these vegetables are done. I'm gonna empty them out to the sausage in. We don't need it tonight, tomorrow morning, with eggs. If we don't eat it tonight, the bears are gonna come for it. Are you kidding? The key to any successful kitchen cook is cleaning up while you're still cooking. Chance, my buddy Chance taught me that. Hey, you know what's great? Is I don't have to clean this right now. I just, boom, drop it on in. And uh, yeah, dinner is served. Here you go, man. Wow. Some nice sauteed oh, veggies. Thank you. Sausage. Where's yours? That's right here. <laughs> Very good, right? What a deal. We retired to the campfire with our bellies full and the night young. No Wi-Fi, no phones, no place else to be or anything to do. Just me and my dad, some whiskey, the fire, and some stories to share. Dad, you having a good time? What a night. When was the last time you were out camping? Uh, the army in uh, Germany in the winter of 68. Uh, Oh my goodness. You haven't been out since? <laughs> oh my gosh. I had my fill. <laughs> <laughs> well, we you're back we out now. We didn't quite camp this luxuriously. Yeah, this is pretty nice. Not a worry in the world. We're going to get some stars, I think. It was really great to spend some quality time with my dad as it had been a little while. You all definitely know how important living free, riding hard, and getting stoked is to me, but family is right up there too. This was one of those spur of the moment decisions that just kind of manifested through us talking in the van that day. And it's funny now that I think back at it as it really is one of those nights I'll never forget. We both woke up the next day feeling extremely relaxed and took our time enjoying the morning over some coffee before getting back on the road for the final leg of our journey, which I was particularly excited about. We turned back north, clipping the corner of Idaho before making a hard turn west again, passing through Missoula, Montana, heading towards the far corner of the country. I've always dreamt of visiting the Pacific Northwest and the drive-in did not disappoint. We reached Washington State where we made a stop in Leavenworth, a small Bavarian town in the mountains, but we didn't end there. All right, we're in line at the border. Fingers crossed they let us in. <laughs> this road trip may be coming to an end, but that just means it's time for a new adventure. We're heading to Whistler. On this occasion, Pops and I are about to pass into Canada, into BC for the first time ever to ride bikes. All right, we made it in. I'm in Canada and I'm going to meet up with Seth. Canada, there is a lot of stoke heading your way. I hope you're ready. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you again next time as I begin to explore this new frontier. Until then, you know what to do. Live free, ride hard, and get stoked.